One of the most requested features on Roll20 is finally here. If you've ever wanted your party to walk beneath rooftops, explore dense forests, or uncover hidden secrets, you're going to love the new foreground layer and reactions. The foreground layer lets GMs place objects above tokens, like rooftops that fade when characters pass beneath them, or bridges that obscure them from view. Reactions apply effects like conditional fade to any object on any layer, create dynamic immersive maps that react to your friends in real time, like hidden foes and traps. Both of these features are available to GMs in games created by Plus and Pro subscribers on Roll20's new and improved tabletop. Here's how to set up the foreground layer in your Roll20 game. First, head to the layers menu in the toolbar and select the foreground layer, just like you would with the map or token layer. Then you can add tokens, drawings, or text directly to the foreground layer. Going forward, we'll refer to these as objects. You can also move existing objects to the foreground layer by right-clicking, selecting Change Layer, and then Foreground Layer. To customize foreground objects, right-click or open its token settings. From here, you'll have access to the foreground object options and reactions menus. Let's go over what each of these settings mean. First, the foreground object options menu. The first three settings here let you control how foreground objects interact with your dynamic lighting settings. Above darkness means your object will always be visible. As darkness means your object will render as part of the darkness layer. Think of darkness as a black sheet of paper hiding the map. As darkness paints your objects onto that paper and then reveals what's below it with player vision. Last, below darkness means an object is hidden by any walls and darkness but will still appear above your tokens. The final setting, Show Grid, lets you enable or disable a grid above your foreground object. Now we'll go over the Reactions menu. Conditional Fade lets an object fade when a token enters its area. If Conditional Fade is turned off, the object won't fade when a token interacts with it. And don't worry about losing your tokens. Nameplates and token bars stay visible to whoever controls the token, and tokens can still be clicked even if you can't see them. If you turn Conditional Fade on, you can set an opacity that your object will fade to when interacted with. Last, the foreground only setting lets you apply this fade effect when the object is on the foreground layer only. This is useful for GMs who move items between layers often. The best part, you can add reactions like conditional fade to objects on any VTT layer, not just the foreground layer, using the above settings. Finally, let's go over some helpful tips and tricks. You can group objects, drawings, or text to apply the same reaction to all of them at once. To group objects, first select a group by clicking and dragging, or selecting multiple objects while holding Shift. Then right-click and head to Advanced Transform. Last, click Group. From here, you can adjust the conditional fade for all of these objects at once. Then, a token that interacts with any of the grouped objects will trigger that effect for the entire group. Last, the GM hamburger menu has been updated to make GMing way easier. You can now adjust opacity for GM darkness, the foreground layer, and the GM layer on the fly, toggle the foreground layer on and off for players, and as always, preview as a token, copy your game link, toggle dark mode, report bugs, and more. Right now, Conditional Fade is the only available reaction, but more are coming. We've been brainstorming ideas like jukebox automations, teleporting tokens, and more. Let us know what you'd like to see below, and don't forget to subscribe for more Roll20 tutorials and updates.